API that Learning Locker has is called the Aggregation API, and it's possibly the most powerful. What it does is allow you to get back data from statements in any format that you need. It's what we use to generate the graphs inside of LL. So all the data that powers this graph is returned directly from the aggregation API. Um, really the only limit to what you can do with it is the performance of the database um, and your ability to create aggregation pipelines. The API itself is an interface to MongoDB's aggregation operator with a few bits piled on top. So we've got a couple of custom options and there's security. The aggregation operator from Mongo takes a, a pipeline. So the idea is that you have statements come in one side and they go through different stages. So there's a match stage which filters down the statements. Um, their group stage, which groups the statements into whatever you've chosen. So the statements come in, they go through your operators, and the result of each operator is passed to the next stage. And eventually you get the answer that you're looking for. Let's have a look at a quick example. Hopefully this works when I just paste it into Postman. Need to change that back to SAS. Excellent. So if we have a look at the parameters for this, and we've got this pipeline. The pipeline is JSON encoded here. Let's unencode that. And let's put this in a formatter. Okay. So the pipeline itself is an array the square bracket at the top, square bracket at the bottom denotes an array, and the stages are objects inside that array. So the stages sh should have one key, which starts with a dollar, which says what that stage does. This first, first stage is a limit, so it uses the dollar limit operator, and that takes a number. So we limit ourselves to one statement. The second stage is a project. And project takes uh, a map of the fields that you want and the fields that you don't want. So we're saying we don't want the ID. ID is normally included by default, even if you use project, but we do want the statement. So if we go back to our result, what we have back, what we have here is just the statement and no ID on the end. There's a statement ID, but not the documents ID. We can actually make that a bit more specific in the same way that we do with the REST APIs. This works exactly the same way as project in the REST APIs. So if we only wanted the object, statement.object is one. And we pass this to our pipeline. And there we only get the statement.object out of the end. There's a couple of other parameters as well. So we've got cache. If cache is set to true, we store the result in Learning Locker's Redis cache. And every time you do a fetch on that, depending on your cache timeout, which is set in when you configure Learning Locker when you first install it, depending on the cache timeout, you will get the cached result instead of going back to the database. This can really help reduce the load when you're running a lot of aggregations, for example, when you've got a dashboard. The cache timeout at halfway, uh, halfway to timing out, if you send another request, will recompute the value, but you'll get back the old cached value. So if my timeout was 10 minutes, if I make a request, another request at five minutes, I get back the old value, but in the background, it starts recomputing the new value. And then if I do another request before 10 minutes, 
I'll get the updated value. Max time MS determines how long the query is allowed to run for. You can use that as a safety limit to prevent massive queries hitting your database for too long. And max scan determines the number of statements the aggregation is allowed to hit. If you did a match stage, so match is used to filter out statements and um, that didn't hit an index, it would usually have to go through every single statement in the database, uh, which is called a scan. So you want to ensure that you always hit an index, but if you are not sure that you're going to, you can use max scan to limit the um, damage that the query can do. So yeah, that covers the basics of the aggregation API. We'll go through a more detailed example of how to build up one of the visualizations in the next video.